September 4th, 2014, I was riding to work on my Harley and a car pulled out in front of me. I was westbound on Hatton Road and I saw that car and I just knew this wasn't gonna be good. I went to the right lane to get away from him, thinking he would stop. I remember locking my brakes up, thinking it just it would end. And my last thought was looking over to my left and thinking he's still coming. And I struck the front passenger side of his vehicle. And that's the last I remember. It was just the moment of impact. If somebody comes in with significant trauma, blood pressure is below 90, or fall from a certain height, or a certain number of long bones are broken proximal to the body, uh, it's automatically a, a level one trauma activation. Uh, which brings in the OR team, the trauma surgeon, as well as uh, pre-orders labs uh, per protocol to speed up the process and actually expedite the patient's care. Everything's moving so fast. I didn't really even have time to consider what injuries I had. I just wanted to be fixed. In the case of a severe trauma, such as a motorcycle accident, the general trauma protocol is to CT the head, the neck, the chest, abdomen, and pelvis to look for any and all injuries at the same time. Whenever we have a, a patient that's brought in with significant trauma, it is extremely important that we get the results of any sort of imaging uh, as prompt as possible, um, especially for George, whose uh, injuries were so significant that they were definitely life-threatening or could have caused uh, permanent disability. We read the CTs uh, immediately as the patient's being scanned, and then we uh, call the emergency room or the trauma surgeon with the results. Once George was stabilized and we'd gotten all the imaging done and had determined the extent of his injuries, uh, Dr. Rizzo was notified and uh, was at the bedside within minutes. My first memory was Dr. Rizzo standing at the foot of my bed. Her voice right off the bat had a command to it and I felt safe and that I was in good hands and uh, that continued on in the ICU. At United Regional, we have many hospital-based physician groups that contribute to the care, especially of the acutely injured or acutely ill patients that come in uh, through the emergency department. What I do is I make sure that there's coordination of events between all the other specialists and all of the other caregivers. Trauma does pose some unique challenges. It's a uh, time where uh, often you don't have all the information, so you're also part detective. Anesthesia reports to the trauma code as part of the trauma team. They come, they assess the airway, they intubate the patient as necessary, they manage the ventilation, which then frees me up and the emergency room physician up to start taking care of other threats to life that the patient may have. A lot of, that we deal with depends on any radiographic findings. Speed is very important and um, since we're on call 24-7, uh, we do have uh, computers in home that we can read from, so we can sometimes have the exams read before the patient even gets transferred back to the emergency room. Several findings on, uh, from x-rays definitely affect the anesthetic plan and, and what, what we're going to do. We bend the neck to put in a breathing tube if necessary, and if there's any neck fractures, uh, in the bones there, that can be dangerous. The pathology team reports to a code as part of the trauma team, and their job in the trauma code is to bring the cooler with uncross-matched blood that can be used emergently for the patient. Well, when a trauma patient comes in, usually uh, labs are ordered in a short turnaround time or STAT, and oftentimes what you're looking for is how much hemorrhaging has occurred in a trauma patient and we look at the patient's hemoglobin, hematocrit, determine what their blood status is. We can also evaluate their coagulation status to see if they need blood products. They're typing and crossing that individual patient so that within 20 minutes, which is a pretty quick amount of time, they can have me a unit of blood that is specific for George. We stay in close communications with the physicians involved in these trauma patients and intensive care patients. We try to stay on the telephone, let them know of any unusual laboratory results, any unusual findings that we see in the laboratory. Our role in the laboratory is to provide information to the physicians taking care of these patients so they can provide appropriate care and hopefully get the patients out of the hospital as soon as possible. Once the trauma patient has become stabilized in the trauma bay and or has been taken to the OR and had a definitive surgery, many of our high acuity trauma patients, as George was, then have a stay in the intensive care unit. And the intensive care unit is, is staffed 24 seven 
by an intensivist and or nurse practitioner. As intensivists, we monitor and manage patients that are critically ill, usually the sickest of the sick, including patients with medical problems as well as patients with surgical or trauma problems. Once we evaluate the patient, we can assist the physicians involved in the care by helping with the monitoring and helping with medications and other support systems to try to improve the patient's survival. One nice thing about this community and, and working here is uh, the level of communication. So we're able to interact very efficiently because we work together so often. In the old days when uh, primary physicians were t exclusively taking care of a patient, both as an inpatient and outpatient, their time commitment was relatively limited since they have other duties in the office to see patients and they may be able to see the patient once a day, either first thing in the morning or late in the evening. Now, uh, my group, the acute care surgeons, we have hospitalists that take care of primary care and internal medicine issues. As hospitalists, our role is to provide full-time inpatient care uh, and when the emergency room physician evaluates the patient and, patient and determines that patient needs to be admitted for acute care management, we are on the case right from then. And usually within a few minutes after they call us, we are on the case. And from there on, we are constantly monitoring and making appropriate treatment decisions and appropriate testing that may be needed until the day the patient is ready to be discharged. We take care of the discharge and we coordinate care with the outpatient primary physician uh, for ongoing management. In patient care in the United States in the 21st century, it becomes a team sport. So not only do you have an attending physician that admits the patient, but there's hospital-based physicians as well that help care for and or can consult on the patient. I had to have an open reduction internal fixation done on my left leg where they entered a 21-inch rod from the knee to the ankle, three screws, and I broke eight ribs on a Six on the right side, two on the left, collapsed lung, punctured lung, burst fracture on my L4, compression on my L3. I bruised my liver, pancreas, kidney, and spleen, grade two. I just needed a lot of help, and uh, I got it. I know that there's a whole team involved in my care while I was here, and uh, just from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank each and every one of them for uh, providing the care that they did to me and giving me a second shot at life.